If I talk throughout it, will he get mad? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I don't think so. If you hear like ruffling around. And of course, I ruined my nail polish. <laughs> ah! oh it's God. weird with you here. I feel like you're sorry. gonna laugh at me. Yes. What's up, YouTube? I got to get started. I'm currently dealing with a bit of a cold right now. My voice sounds a little off, but that kind of fits into the topic of today's video, health and wellness. Everyone wants to feel beautiful and radiant. With social media booming now more than ever, it feels like outward appearance and how others feel about your outward appearance has become more and more prevalent. Yet at the same time, there's been a bigger movement towards natural products, people kind of getting concerned about chemicals, additives, and unnatural products in their household and beauty items. <laughs> This has created the perfect breeding ground for what I would call the goop epidemic. Goop is what happens when a company is created solely to profit off of our paranoia and misconceptions. Today, I want to go more in depth into Goop's predatory business practices so we can understand just how bad Goop's success is for the American consumer. Before I dive deep into the Goop, I have to admit something. I'm a bit of a health nerd myself, I've always loved health and wellness, I have really sensitive skin and have struggled with acne throughout my life. I've struggled with sensitive skin and acne my whole life and so I'm really always interested in what goes into my body and what I put on my skin. In my opinion, companies like Goop take wellness to a whole new level of ridiculousness and they kind of give the wellness conscious a bad name while also spreading misinformation and misconception. The health community should be aligned with science and medicine instead of continually going against it in favor of businesses selling bizarre supplements and snake oil. Oops, I mean essential oils. But that's just my humble opinion. Sick Madison here, and yes, I did get sicker, but I recently saw this really timely video by Dr. Dre, an awesome YouTuber on this platform about clean beauty. She is a licensed dermatologist and had a lot of really great things to say about all the problems with clean beauty, so definitely check it out, link below. The high cost of Goop and many other health and wellness companies like it perpetuates the elitist idea that health products are exclusively for the elite and wealthy. So, I must ask, Goop, why? Funny enough, I recorded this video before the Goop Netflix trailer came out, so just really weird timing on that. But I guess that's an even bigger reason why a video like this is so important and needed and why Goop must be stopped. Super dramatic. Duh, duh, duh. To get started on this in-depth kind of analysis of Goop and the company, I thought I would start by going into the about section of the Goop website itself to see what Goop has to say about their company. What's Goop? Making every choice count. We believe that the little things count, that good food is the foundation of love and wellness, that the mind-body-spirit is intricately linked, inextricably <laughs> linked, and we have more control over how we express our health than we currently understand. We believe in making every choice count. We also believe in buying fewer things that are better, which is why we make and curate incredible products across beauty, fashion, wellness, and home. The funny thing is, those few things are probably more costly than a million other things in other stores and companies. Our history. Launched in 2008 out of Gwyneth Paltrow's kitchen as a homespun weekly newsletter. Just, you know, very humble beginnings, you know, from a multi-millionaire Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow, or as they say, GP, created Goop to organize her unbiased travel recommendations health-centric health -centric recipes and shopping discoveries for friends, and also a place to get her own questions about health, fitness, and the site answered. It has always been a place for GP to introduce some of the incredible experts who have mentored her throughout her life, and a place where readers can find suggestions about where to shop, eat, and stay from a trusted friend not from an anonymous crowdsourced recommended recommendation engine. So they're making it sound as if Gwyneth Paltrow is this super trusted figure, but my question would be what makes her so trusted and her advice, opinions, and products such a trusted thing? You know, she's not a scientist, she's not a doctor. Are they trying to spread like distrust in those other sources? Are they trying to say that 
Gwyneth Paltrow is the one source for all of your health questions because that's a little bit shady and definitely wrong. I don't know if Gwyneth Paltrow or GP even really has a basis in which to be giving advice um, besides the fact that she's genetically gifted and has made appearances in a few movies. Um, you know, the first I heard of Gwyneth Paltrow was that she was married to the lead singer of Coldplay. So, you know, not someone I would automatically think, if I have any health and wellness questions, I gotta go to her. I feel like I'm coming across a little bit harsh in this clip. All I'm trying to say is yes, I respect Gwyneth Paltrow as an actress and in her career, you know, obviously I don't only remember her as being a married woman to some other dude. I do like her role in Seven, but in terms of getting medical advice or even just wellness advice from her, I don't know if she has really anything to merit that authority and I would really question that personally. What they say that their values are is we take a serious what Goop says their values are is we take a curious, unbiased, open-minded, and service-centric approach to the work we do. We test the waters so that you don't have to. We will never recommend something that we don't love and think worthy of your time and wallet. We value your trust above all things. And then it goes into all of their different faucets of, you know, retail that they sell on their site, beauty, food, style, travel, and wellness. So I think that the word that bugs me the most that they use throughout their About Us page is unbiased. That is simply not factual. The fact that they are selling certain products on their site means they're obviously biased towards those products. And to state any otherwise is just offensive to the consumer's intelligence. It seems like Goop is trying to come across as the number one source of um, unbiased information on clean products, clean beauty, you know, wellness and health products, when in fact they're selling stuff on their site. So, you know, that just intrinsically means that they're biased with their opinion. Just gonna say that. So now let's go into a product examination of the things on the Goop website. To my surprise, Goop recently, or maybe just to the lack of my knowledge, came out with a clothing line, which is a little bit bizarre because I thought that Goop was really just all health and wellness, and I don't really understand how clothing fits into that. Maybe it's just me, but the clothing is god-awfully expensive. I literally could not find a single clothing piece on the Goop website that was under $200. I do not understand this. America, explain. They're very simple clothing pieces, so I really can't imagine them costing that much to make. Like, I know that companies always use this excuse of like, the ingredients are quality ingredients, the, you know, pieces and the fabric is just quality, well-sourced, but if you just look at the numbers, no matter how well-sourced and ethically sourced, um, you know, a fabric or product is, it still should not be costing that much to make. I really can't imagine that Gwyneth Paltrow is that poor of a businesswoman that she's sourcing, you know, fabrics that cost $100 for a single clothing piece. The only explanation in my head is that she's increasing the price for a huge profit margin simply because she knows she can. I did some more research and there are definitely some factors that will cost certain garments to cost more. Quality, you know, design, fit, all those different factors, really ethically sourcing your products, it will cost more to produce less. And obviously when you're producing less quantity of garments, that in itself costs more because of economies of scale. But will it cost more to the level of charging $500 for one skirt as Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop charges? No, 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 no. I highly do not believe that. So anyways, hopefully that clears up some answers. Looking into Goop, Goop, Goop. Um, looking into Goop beauty products, I noticed that, how do I say, there's a lot of buzzwords that Goop beauty products use that are very trendy today, but when you actually go deep into the ingredients, there's some things that make me a little bit uncertain about putting those products on my face especially. Like I said, I've had acne prone skin my whole life and really, really sensitive skin, and Goop beauty products literally have fragrance and a bunch of essential oils in them. 
two things that break out my skin like crazy and are just known to cause extreme sensitivity and sensitive skin. Dermatologists recommend avoiding fragrance and there's a general consensus that essential oils can cause extreme skin sensitivity. So the fact that Gwyneth Paltrow is creating these unbiased products that are likely to cause skin sensitivity just because essential oils are kind of a trending subject right now is a little bit concerning. Most unbiased sources can have a general consensus that fragrance is bad in skincare. I'm gonna go over some bizarre products on the Goop website uh, just off of my phone right here just so you can kind of see how weird a lot of this stuff gets. So there's the G-Tox Detoxifying Super Powder, which is sold at $60 or $55 with a subscription. And it's a daily shot of detoxifying nutrients and botanical extracts that benefits both the skin and the body. You know, it seems like a pretty standard uh, powder supplement that you put into water. It has vitamin C and resveratrol, but Honestly, I just think of the vitamin C packets that you can buy for like $5 that you put in your drink if you're getting sick like I currently am, and it just really does not seem like it's that much of a revolutionizing product to justify the $60 price that you have to pay for it. I'm trying to see how much comes in it, like how many packets. Is it one packet for $60 or what is it? It comes with 30 packets, so that's like a month's worth of packets if you're having one every day daily, so that's two dollars a day. Um, if you think about it that way, if you're really like head over heels about this supplement, it's not crazy two dollars a day, but can most people afford that on a regular basis? No, it's like a gym membership or a yoga membership, um, you know, which is probably more beneficial than a packet of powder. So the interesting thing about Goop is it's a blog as well as a shop and from what I know about Google searches and SEO which is um, search engine optimization which is what a lot of companies use to be able to rank higher in searches if someone's looking up something. Having a blog and a store seems like a lot more work and you would think like oh someone does that for the passion of it but really all it means is that someone's ranking higher on their SEO searches by putting in you know, these long blogs with a ton of keywords on them. Really that just means that their store ranks higher when someone goes to search you know, beauty, health, and wellness. So Goop will come up more often in search searches and therefore their store will come up and they'll be able to sell more. So really it's just a business play, um, this whole blog thing. I don't think it, I honestly don't think it reaches any further than that. I'll pop up on the screen some really bizarre uh, products that I happen to find on the Goop website. Hey, let's get into the Goop. Gotta love these supplements for $90. What the heck is worth $90? Um, I especially love this one, high school jeans if you really want to turn back time because apparently Goop is a um, magician. So. Yeah, I've got all of these really expensive uh, supplements, toilet paper for $34, a shower head for $275. Some of this stuff is just insanely expensive. I don't know if anyone can justify it. Like, what is this for athletic movements? And of course, there's a whip on here. Some of this stuff was just pretty, pretty um, graphic, so I couldn't put it up on here, but you get the gist with uh, the leather blindfold and gold handcuffs, uh, what I'm kind of talking about. Gotta love these ashwagandha supplements at $47, a recovery boot system that's the entire cost of my month rent, um, and of course vampire repellent, psychic vampire repellent, makes a lot of sense. Uh, once again, a $500 weighted blanket, Manuka honey for $150, stuff, you know, just really good essentials for the household um, that everyone needs in their life. And uh, of course, you gotta have those essential oils. Um, yeah, just some of this stuff, I really don't get who on earth is buying this, who is buying this. So why has Goop gotten away with selling their products for such high prices? for what they really are. What Gwyneth Paltrow did was not only create a brand, but create a cult following. You can see within these Goop events, it's just crazy how many people show up and really drink the Kool-Aid. By creating a blog and creating an intense following, 
Gwyneth Paltrow was able to gain trust in the consumer for the products that she eventually sold. Once again, when you hear them talking about unbiased and Gwyneth's, you know, opinion that you can trust in, really what, what the Goop blog has done successfully is gain this trust in the consumer. If people trust you, they're more likely to buy what you're selling. I don't think this is a good thing because Goop has something to gain from your trust. They're a business and gaining your trust means they are now able to sell anything to you and convince you it's worth your coins and good for you simply because you trust in what they have to say. Reality is nutrition and wellness are very hard things to study. Every body is so different and long-term effects of one product, supplement, or lifestyle change can be very hard to study since there are so many factors pertaining to health. Goop sells a lot of products that are described as Ayurvedic products, which is an ancient health practice in India. I studied a lot when I was doing my yoga teacher training course. They also sell Chinese medicine products. Both of these are cultural practices that thousands to millions swear by and are part of their culture and something their ancestry practiced as well. But using those buzzwords to sell your crazy expensive products does more harm than good in my opinion, not only to the consumers, but to that culture itself. It's a little bit offensive, let's be real. Gotta love those white girls at it with cultural appropriation once again going unchecked. Goop is showing other companies that it's acceptable to charge such a high amount for health products and people will still buy them. This perpetuates the cycle of health foods and products being sold at high-end prices that only the wealthy can afford. You look at the cost of Coke versus kombucha, organic versus inorganic, and even, you know, body soaps. There's a toxic body soap versus a non-toxic body soap. And even though the non-toxic body soap, you know, with less ingredients, literally has less ingredients, somehow it's they're selling it at a higher price. Once again, no matter how high quality or ethically sourced the ingredients are, it doesn't cost more to make something with less ingredients. Companies charge this price simply because they can and people will still buy it. Another interesting thing about Goop is that there are no reviews on their website that I could find from real everyday Goop customers. And when I did a Google search, it was really hard for me to find what I would call an unbiased review on Goop itself and their products. So of course, there's a few BuzzFeed videos which are fun to watch and entertaining, but in terms of real everyday consumers, who's actually buying this product, who's using it, I couldn't really find much on it. The only unbiased review I could find was an article by the New York Times titled, A Doctor Gives Gwyneth Paltrow's Group Group. <laughs> a doctor gives Gwyneth Paltrow's goop an examination. And here are some takeaways from this article. Regarding the jade egg, that's what it's called, the jade egg. Dr. Gunter, an obstetrician and gynecologist said, it's the biggest load of garbage on the site since vaginal steaming, which I don't know what that is, but that sounds interesting <laughs> even in itself. And when talking about cleansing the body with goat milk as a hedge against parasites, she said, I just write it off as crazy, except some people are going to follow this advice and waste a lot of money. And herein lies the real evil of Goop. You could say that what they're doing is harmless. You could say, so what? Some rich person that's dumb enough to buy into this stuff decides to buy something. They kind of brought that on themselves, right? But Goop customers could be seriously harmed by the health advice Goop gives. And Goop customers are probably people like me and maybe like you who just really want to take care of themselves so they can live a long and healthy life and be there for their loved ones. Watch their children grow up, avoid major health problems, something that we can all relate to in life. Dr. Jen Gunter has an incredible article on her blog titled, Dear Gwyneth Paltrow, we're not effing with you, we're correcting you, XOXO science. I'll link the article down below, but in it, she discusses some of the most outrageous claims Gwyneth, Gwyneth and Goop have made. Oh. This includes saying wearing bras will give you breast cancer, which I'm pretty sure if you have boobs that to fill a bra, you are probably more likely to get breast cancer. But you know, correlation means causation, right? Gwen says that she's not toxic, but talks about incorporating alcohol and Botox into her lifestyle, which are two known scientifically proven toxins. Dr. Gunter also notes how Goop uses fear-mongering phrases to cause readers to fear the toxicity of the products they use and toss them out and switch for Goop instead. 
once again, it's creating this trust so that you know your consumers and readers trust you and want to buy your products instead of other competing products, which is you know, a smart business model, but kind of evil, you know? The thing is, the word toxin itself is used so liberally on the Goop website with no real definition or scientific backing. Spreading misinformation causes real people harm. They stop trusting what their doctors are saying, and they try alternative, alternative, why can I say that? And they try alternative products instead of seeking professional help. At the very least, a lot of people are wasting their money, and at the very most, a lot of people could be harmed or damaged by this misinformation. This whole situation had me thinking about a story my mom used to tell me. My mom's a gerontologist, which is the study of aging, and told me about a small island in Greece with the highest population of healthy elderly people. When studying this island, it was found that the residents do eat more veggies and they cook with a lot of olive oil, but they also drink very frequently and party quite a bit. They're very social people with lots of social gatherings and a lot of the elderly people take care of the younger on this island. But it's still unknown what exactly is the biggest cause of their health. So the biggest takeaway for that is that health and wellness is a broad spectrum and it's more than what you eat or put in your body and on your skin. And anyone trying to convince you otherwise is probably trying to sell you something. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Goop. It's a super interesting topic for me and one that I could probably talk about forever. Subscribe for more business videos and like this thumbs up if you want to see more in-depth analyses on different types of businesses and their business practices, some unethical, some maybe just super interesting. And hopefully we are forwarding the consumer-minded individuals and have a great rest of your day. Bye.